Color theory is learning how to use the color wheel to mix and match paints to look real or naturalistic. We'll use primary, mix, secondary, and tertiary colors, learn their complements, define hue, tinting, and warm and cool. So this works perfectly in theory. However, because we're not painting with light, we're painting with pigments, it will change. These are acrylics. They're very inexpensive. You can get whatever you want. And the, the colors that they mix will be affected based on the colors that you have, okay? There's a reason that this is built this way. If you notice, these lines in the center are tri triangles. And these first ones connect the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So we're going to put red, yellow, and blue here, connecting these triangles. And that's our first assignment. Make your primary colors. Make sure you skip a hole. If you don't skip a circle, you'll have to start over. You could do this same exercise with watercolors and just test it out. Or, or oils you can use. You can even, I've used, I've used crayons. I've used um, markers. markers. I've used yeah. markers before. The reason we're using round brushes just for this basic Because we're lesson. putting, we're filling in round circles. Rinse your brush thoroughly. We will, we will then be mixing colors. You can either mix them on the next circles or you can mix them on your palette. You have that choice. Now what I want you to remember about red, yellow, and blue is that you cannot make them. You have to start with them. So you don't have to have a ton of colors, but however you do have to have red, yellow, and blue. We don't use black. Black is not on our palette. Black is not one of the colors that we buy. And that's because we're trying to paint naturalistically. In nature, there are shadows, but there is not black. And that's one of the keys to painting naturalistically, is to not use black. We don't make our white either. But white isn't on our color wheel, but it's the color that we will use to tint. The word tint means to lighten a color. We'll use white for creating um, skin tones and tans and lighter values of brown. Buy these four tubes of paint. Even if you and don't white. have any other color, you got to have those. So the next colors that are connected, if you notice on our color wheel, the other triangle connects what's called the secondary colors. Secondary colors are made up of two adjacent primary colors. And red and yellow make orange. Orange, orange is a secondary color. Okay. We don't have orange, so you're going to take a little bit of yellow. You want to make sure you rinse your brush before you go from yellow to red, or your palette colors will not stay clean. This is a very warm red we're using right now. So you don't really need very much red to create orange. What's unique about primary colors? You can't make them! You can't make them! <laughs> bing, 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 the gold star, give her a brownie. <laughs> then, a combination of two primary colors makes a... Secondary. secondary color. So secondaries are a mixture of two adjacent primary colors. Now, primary and a secondary, when we mix those together, here in this little unique place, we'll create a tertiary color. Red mixed with Brown. purple. Oh. Yeah, this is supposed to be purple. Red and purple make red purple. When we co combine tertiary colors, they're always going to be the name of a primary and a secondary. And we always say the primary color first. So this color isn't orange-red, it's red-orange. Star people. Alright, and this one would be? Yellow-orange. Yes, this one would be? Yellow-green. Blue-green. It is a real name of a tertiary color. Hmm. They are the little box that have big names. So this one would be Lydia. Purple blue. Except that we named the primary color first, so it would be? Wait, blue and purple? Yes! And you can use your palette to do this, or you can do it directly. Sometimes by, sometimes if your secondary colors are still wet, you can actually paint that little spot and add just a little bit of the other color. Just as long as there's a difference between the tertiary color and the, and the other two colors, you're good. Wow. Think of professions other than artists who could benefit from the knowledge of how to mix and match colors. Photographers. Painters. Um, Colorists at Disney. How about gardeners? This is a complete color wheel with its primary, secondary, and tertiary colors filled in. Remember to change your water 
often. Obviously your tertiary colors is when you're getting into mixing colors. Because you're already mixing, you're mixing right now, you're mixing adjacent colors. You're mixing a primary and a secondary to create a tertiary color. Now I want you to notice how less brilliant mm -hmm. the colors are mm -hmm. the more you mix them. The most brilliant color on your palette are your primary colors because those are the ones you didn't mix. That's one reason people buy lots of colors. Is so they don't have to mix them and they don't lose any brilliancy. It's not warm and cool to the touch. It's, it's the way they make us feel that, that we refer to warm and cool. So, how does the sun and fire make us feel? Mm. In the na nature, it makes us feel what? Mm. Hot and warm, hot. So, these are the warm colors. colors. If you think of sunshine and fire, those are warm colors. These, on the other hand, if we think of, of uh, green grass and water and shadows when it's hot here, mm -hmm. we think of cool. So these are the cool colors. Now, when you look at colors in here that are mixtures of warm and cool, mm -hmm. then it's a matter of comparison. This is warmer and this is cooler. Now, nothing is ever going to make orange anything but warm. And nothing's going to make blue anything but cool. But green can be warmer or cooler. I would call that a cool red. Yeah. Whereas your 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 um, Mexican tiles or um, terracotta. terracotta is definitely a very warm red. Now red's already a warm color. Remember, our, these, this is theory, but we're going to actually be using pigments. So to lighten a color, you're going to use white or mm. water. Watercolors, water paints, you can make more transparent. And usually we're working on white paper. Mm -hmm. If you add more water to that color, that's all you have to do to lighten it sometimes. This hues. Hues are the names of the color. So this is the hue of? Yellow. And this is the hue of? Hue of blue. So when you refer to something, uh, you know, color, you say it's, it's the hue of. And sometimes that helps keep things unconfusing. How would you make? If you're going to do a portrait of Blaine with this t-shirt on, it's a very neutral. Yeah. Mm. So what hues would you use to create that t-shirt? Now you can start seeing, is it warm or cool? Now looking compared mm. to his, his complexion, his skin tones, it's very cool. Can you see that that's cool tones? Yes, yeah. Mm. Skin tones are not, we're not black and white and red and yellow, right? Obviously not. Because we already know that black isn't occurring in nature, and neither does white. It's the minerals that we use for pigments. So, to create skin tones, which I have probably ten just on one cheek, you know, we have, you know, and my my hand isn't the same color as my face, and that my hand isn't even the same color on this side as it is this side, or the tips of your fingers versus the knuckles, and you guys have way too too boring hands. That how much it, how exciting all the wheels are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess we're excited. It is the secret to the color wheel. The secret ingredient to mixing and matching colors is to understand what and how to use complementary colors. The complement of a color is opposite it on the color wheel. So, these are the other lines. So, what color connects? Oh, blue? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. It's complementary <laughs> color of blue is? Orange. orange. And I know that because there's a straight line connecting blue to orange. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so red. What's the complementary color of red? See, follow the line it's and it's green. the complementary color of the primary color yellow would be? Purple. purple. Now, if you notice, there are also lines connecting the tertiary colors. Okay? Huh. So primary color is going to have a secondary color complement, always. A tertiary color is going to have another tertiary color as its complement. Since this lesson is all about painting naturalistically, if you look around at nature, nature has some incredible plumage and feathers and colors, but most of it are, is shades of browns and tans, okay? Mm -hmm. 
all winter especially. Our, our, our beautiful fluff mud and marshes, our browns, people's skin and hair were mostly shades of browns and tans. That's what skin tones are. The blackest person and the whitest person standing next together are still not going to be a black tube of paint and a white tube of paint. Complement of blue is orange. When you mix blue and orange together, you get a really beautiful brown. When you mix the complement of <coughs> yellow, which is purple, you mix those two and you get brown. brown. So then you mix red and green together and you get brown. brown. Oh my god. It's magic! Mm -hmm. But this brown is different than this brown is different from this brown. So sometimes you'll use different ones. What if my shirt, or uh, the thing I want to match, isn't really red and it's not really orange, it's it's red orange. The color I'm going to use to create brown with it is going to be blue green. Not blue, not green, but blue green. So the tertiary colors become very significant when we're matching tones and shadows, okay?